In this episode, we're going to finally take on the Academy of Rai Lucaria. Now you start at the Academy Gate Town, Side of Grace, and the Legacy Dungeon itself is smack dab in the middle of the Lyurnia of the Lakes. Now, quickly over here, there's going to be a Golden Seed. Pretty sure I already grabbed it. Yeah. So, just like all golden seeds, they are strewn across the map, and you can collect them all to get a total of 14 flasks. That need to be, you know, 7 uh, crimson, 7 cerulean, or just 14 straight, or however way uh, you decide to divide them. So you don't have to bother with the people at the gate. Just come over here. Off to the left, there's a grace. And you come to the front door. Now, to be able to unlock it, you do need a key. It's going to be this one. Key to open the academy's two sealed gates. And obviously I've already picked it up, but where you can find it is you go to the temple quarter grace. And then you head north. And right there, there's going to be a glintstone dragon. Behind the dragon on a corpse is going to be the key. And with the key in your inventory, you're able to go through the seal. Alright, now before we head into the academy itself, we can walk around here. And as you see in the distance, another golden seed. Pretty sure I picked up this one as well. Yep. Okay, and then the second reason why we wanted to take this detour is because some of you may have spotted while we were coming over here. There is a sign to invade. Now, be summoned to assist your hunter of the bloody fingers. So I guess it's not technically an invasion sign, but we do enter an NPC's game um, to assist them, because I guess they're being invaded. So if you remember, Yura was the samurai, and this time instead of fighting Bloodyfinger Nereus, he's fighting um, Bloodyfinger Ravenmount Assassin. So just another Bloodyfinger duel. out of flasks. Alright. <laughs> it's nice when you're the one ganking for once. Okay, so, after we assist Yura, he gives us a Smithing Stone 5, which is a mid-tier upgrade material, and tells us that his final target is going to be someone named uh, Bloody Finger Eleonora. Now, she is found in the Alts Plateau region. I believe it's at the Second Church of America. So finally, inside the castle, of course, another Trina Lily. And where is it? Oh, over here. Magic Grease. 
Now I won't be using too much grease. So, of course, if you know where to look, you will find all the illusory walls. And the rune arc, they're useful for regular playthroughs. This might get kind of tricky, because these marionette soldiers do drop down and ambush you. And they actually follow you in here, so I might get killed. There's a Academy Sorcerer. Finally, back here, there's going to be a Somber Smithing Stone 3. Alright, moving on. You will then be spit out here, outside. Be careful, these guys will run and grab at you like that. Now, most people will just go on the straightaway, but I do want to show a bit of a side path here. Like many legacy dungeons, if you skirt these sides, you're likely to find an alternate path. Now the reason why I wanted to show this is because these marionette soldiers, they will snipe you um, when your back is turned to them, so it's kind of cheap. You do get a summon as well um, for collectors. And you can get the jump on that dog there. Now, like I said, dogs in Souls games are notoriously like some of the most oh damn, some of the most annoying enemies. So here is the uh, Carrion Knight set. You get all four pieces there. But yeah, no one likes dogs, they're very annoying. And then how to get back on the main road, you just follow this uh, little shortcut. Okay, almost done here. Now there is an Alabaster Lord over there, uh, we're not going to bother with him right now. Just hop on this moving pulley thing. So progressing through the academy, it's going to be a melee guy, and off to the side here, it's going to be a glintstone scroll, or a cookbook rather. That's the scroll, right? This is an, another illusory wall. Now over there, uh, there's a bundle of three St. Trina lilies if you go off to the left hand side. I'm not going to go there because... There's no way to jump back, so I'd have to reset the area. So for the sake of progression, we'll just... Ah, shit. <laughs> well, I guess it doesn't matter. I didn't want to trigger those guys, because... Yeah. There are a lot of spellcasters in this area, so I would prefer to just take on this melee guy alone, and have them keep their backs turned to me. So going to want to crouch and just crouch right past them. There are more ranged sorcerers up here as well as a giant jar enemy. And when you do hear the audio cue, you want to start sprinting and dodge rolling.
Okay. Now you wanted to kill that guy because he might sneak up on you while you're buffing. Because as you guessed it, there is a boss. Now this boss, um, for low level playthroughs, it gives me a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <sighs> well, there you go. Yeah, so his attacks have a very wide sweep. And he's just so quick. Now, he is a glass cannon, the Red Wolf of Radigan. So, although he does a lot of damage... It doesn't take many hits to bring him down, so I guess there's that. And because he's a beast, I think he's weak to fire because of his fur, so that would that'd make sense. It's annoying because every time you die, which is going to be a lot, you got to take care of this guy. So. Yeah, so this guy's sweeping attacks are so fucking annoying. And also, of course, he's got ranged attacks as well. So as, as well as lunging at you and biting you, he's got the magic to back him up. Okay, luckily I was able to get him there. Now, on past playthroughs, um, his RNG wasn't so fortunate, or rather, it wasn't so generous to me. <laughs> so, yeah, on past playthroughs, I've struggled a lot with him. Um, on past low-level runs, I should mention. If you're his level or above, it's, you know, he's kind of a pushover, but it's just because... I take increased damage, and my health pool is so minuscule that on these kinds of runs, um, he's kind of a toss-up. He could either be super easy like that, or just be a fucking headache. So, along this uh, stairway here, you want to trigger these giant ball enemies. And just run past them. Now you are able to, what do you call it, you are able to roll through them, if you can. Now this guy, this guy is super annoying, because he is coded to, like, instantly parry you if you do a medium attack. Moonground Carrion Knight. Yeah, fuck, I didn't actually think he could parry that, wow. I thought it was only light attacks he could parry. Fuck. <laughs> but as you saw, it's any attack. Son of a bitch. Ah, shit, he got me. What a quick motherfucker. Yeah. As you saw there, as long as he was two-handing his straight sword, he's not able to parry, but he super quickly switched back. What a fucking asshole. <laughs> Oh my god, that took an embarrassing amount of time. Uh, oh my god. 
That was absolutely ridiculous. But yeah. So, that annoying fucker down. Jesus Christ, that took an embarrassing amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Let's go unlock the shortcut here. Not really much of a shortcut, because, yeah, like I said, these two guys will just ambush you every single time. Well, not really ambush, I mean, it's like you can see them, but still, the fact that they're here. However, we do get our magic infusion, because on this balcony is the glintstone weapon plane. So now, regardless of any Ash of War, we can infuse our Uchikatana, or any weapon for that matter, that's able to be infused with magic damage. 